welcome back earlier we saw two types of variables in nature right so system defined variables data types like uh, integer character flow double right and then there are user defined data types so far we saw enums right so struct and unions are two different types of user defined data types whenever you want to have a collection right a group of items combined together that's when you use structure right so let's take an example that way it will be better to understand structures so let's take a program and then explain how structure works let's assume we have to write a program that will store students data like name roll number department marks of english math science and then compute the total and cgp of a particular student let's assume that's the program we have to write there are two approaches right so let's first look at approach one so let's look at this program right uh, name roll number science mark math mark english mark total and a floating point va variable to store the average so printf enter name this is the format in which the user has to enter so this will get displayed first and then scan up to read everything right so the name roll number science mark math mark english mark total is computed average is calculated total divided by 3.0 to make it a floating point division and then printing the answer so let's run this program so enter the names so i'll name it as david um, and roll number is uh, say 1111 and uh, science mark is say 83 max mark is 989 and uh, english mark is 100 right so David, roll number 1111, total is 272, average is 90.67. So this is for one student. Let's assume the same thing has to be done for 10 students. The only change in the program would be something like this. So let's look at this program. So we have defined the number of students as three, right? So um, care name of three students. For each student, it's 20 characters for the name. Roll number of three students, science marks of three students, math marks of two students, English marks of three students, total of three, average of three, right? So these are three students, all these are integer arrays, right? And this one is a floating point array. And we have an i in which is an iterator. i equal to zero to num plus plus i. We are getting the marks of all the students here, right? So scan of once all the students details are obtained now we are calculating the total now we are calculating the average here and then we are printing the details of each student so this is a very simple program which does it let's run this so it's going to ask for the details so now david 101 is the roll number um, english marks science mark math john 102 66, 68, 90, and then Smith, 103, 87, 89, 87. Right, so now it prints the details of the three students. So, a couple of things to note down here, right? So, if I change it to five in one place, the entire program works for five students, right? So, there's a big advantage of hash define using this moving forward, use this construct, right? Now, this is one program that we have done with integer arrays. Now, the same thing if we have to convert to structure, right? And why do we want to convert to structure? We will look at both of them shortly. So, first look at one student and how to get the marks of one student, right? So, here what we have done is we have declared a user defined data type called student. So, struct student, this is a data type name and we are saying that a student's record has all these details that we have here. It has a name, it has a roll number, it has science marks, math marks, English marks and total and average, right? So every student has this data. So this becomes a student record. Now similar to integer and character, struct student becomes a data type. So I can declare variables of this type, struct student and then I can declare S, right? So Similar to integer, similar to float, the struct student is a data type now, right? And uh, the default values are garbage because this is a local variable. Now, we can read the values. So, very similarly, we are giving a printf here and scanf. The only difference is this variable s 
dot name s dot roll number s dot science mark right so s dot comes now we have read all this data right and then s dot total is s dot science dot s dot math dot s dot english mark right and average is calculated and we are printing the values let's run this program So here it's asked ask for the name. So for one student, 101, 37, or 23, 68, 90, right? So it prints you the total and the average of that particular student, right? This is the advantage. Now let's look at this in Python Tutor. So this is the same program in Python Tutor. So here, if you look at it, this entire thing is one record for a student of data type struct student memory is allocated like this everything is of type s the variable name is s right of type struct student now let's run this from the first thing so initially it's all garbage because it's a local variable now it prints on the screen enter name roll number and marks so i'm doing first a copy here right so david it's initialized to david because python tutor does not accept scan of i'm doing a default initialization Roll number is 101, science mark is 80, math mark is 90, and English mark is 93. So these variables are initialized. Total is computed. Average is also calculated. And we do a printf of the values. Right? So here you would see the print of the names. So this is how it works. So this is the size of this. So if we want to quickly check the size of this, let's do that as well. So let's calculate the size of it. Name, which is 20 bytes. Integer is 4 bytes. So 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, 40, and 44. So 44 would be the size of this variable s. Let's run this to check. So you will see a 44 here. That's the number of bytes allocated for the student. We can have multiple variables of this type, for example, S1, S2. This is similar to declaring variables of this type, right? So um, that's also allowed. Any number of variables can be declared of this type. So if you want, you can actually declare it here as well, right? So these become global variables, but this is also allowed in the declaration, right? So you can do this here as well. You can declare this variable now S1 dot name. Uh, or s1 dot roll number equal to 101 s2 dot roll number equal to 102 s3 dot roll number equal to 104 103 so these are possible right so these two are global variables these two are local variables so these two by default get initialized to zero these do not get initialized to zero right now Let's look at how to store multiple students data using an structure array or array of structures. Let's do that using Python tutor because it's usually easier to visualize using that. So we have updated the program here. Three records, same student type, right? And here we have declared three variables. So struct student and array of structures, right? Numbers three. So S has three records. For i is equal to 0, i less than num plus plus i. Now we are saying s dot name. For all the three, I am initializing the name to David. In mean, Python tutor does not support scan of. That's the only reason we are di directly storing it. And for each of the roll numbers, I am just incrementing it by i. So 101, 102, 103. Science mark will be 81, 82, 80, 81, 82, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95. These would be the marks. Total is computed, average is calculated and it's printed, right? So let's look at it. So when you look at this here, the three records are stored here, the student records, right? Python tutor shows it really neat. So this is the index zero of the array of struct student S. So S of zero is this, S of one is this, S of two is this, right? These are not initialized values. So now let's run this program. So it prints enter the name and others. So now let's look at the first record. So David gets copied, roll number 101, science mark, math mark, English mark, average is calculated. Right? It prints the two values here. So here you see the values getting printed. Now let's look at the second record, which gets updated here. 
right it should get updated here let's do it we will initialize all the values now if you come back here the second record which is index 1 also is initialized here right you can see that here the second record is initialized this is the first record this is the second record index of 1 all right so now you can go to the third record it gets initialized here so now you see the third record also initialized right the name we kept it as same as david for all the three records roll number marks we incremented by one so this is how it gets stored it gets displayed here right here you will see the display for all the three so this is how it works um, so you see the total and average getting calculated here so this is how structure works right now if you print the size of s it will be slightly different same program with a slight change right so here we have knocked off the entire thing and then we just want to see the size right so 44 is the size of each we already computed 44 into 3 is 132 right so let's look at that it prints the 132 right so that's the size of this s so s has three records each of 42 44 size so total is 132 bytes so why use structures right so we have seen that we could do the same thing using normal variables the advantage of structures is it ties it as a record right so this becomes a student record all the values of a particular student is stored here right instead of looking at multiple arrays you can look at it as one student array right that become makes it much much easier so like normal variable structures can also be initialized in the same program we can also initialize it like this flower bracket here this inner flower bracket stands for um, this individual elements this is how we did for two dimensional arrays as well the similar structure this is the first record this is the second record and this is the third record we close it with the two brackets right now when it executes the statement you would see that it gets initialized so all the values are initialized all the three values also note that the total and average are initialized to zero because those values are not given here so by default it initializes it to zero this is how you can initialize an array of uh, structures if it's a simple structure this s is equal to this would have been sufficient right given that it's an array of structures we have this complex type so let's look at this program here we are going to pass structures to functions right and see how it works given that struct student is now a data type it can be passed to functions as well right so we have written a function here compute which actually takes a structure variable as an argument struct student as an argument and then it computes the total and it computes the average right so it does this function now in the main program right instead of an array let's have three simple variables right david john and s3 is smith these are s1 s2 s3 are three normal variables of type struct student now we are doing a compute of s1 it calculates the total and average and then it prints the value then we are doing a compute of s2 and it does the average compute of s3 and it does the average right what is your expectation of the output for the total and average here so let's see how it works right now pause for a moment and then first thing pause this and then think and then let's continue here right so now let's continue hope you are trying to think about it so let's start this right so david john and smith all three are initialized now right s1 s2 s3 you see the three variables here so now let's do a compute right we are passing s1 we are passing this so here there is a local variable called temp in compute right that's the pa parameter which is receiving the value has been copied over here now we are making a total and average calculation so you see that the total and average are calculated here right so now we will close this function return that total gets that temp should get deleted now once the return happens yes temp is deleted but the total and average in s1 has not reflected what is the problem here right now let's do the same thing for s2 you look at s2 temp is again called right 
uh, this is the temp the computer is called john is passed now the values are passed total is calculated next average is also calculated now you come back to the main program that stack gets deleted so now i'll do a next yes temp is now deleted s2 is not updated same case with s3 as well so the value gets computed right but s3 is not updated what is happening here right similar to an integer variable the value gets copied over here whatever change is made in the function does not get reflected in the main program we saw the 20 integers as well right these are normal local variables so there are two ways to make the change one either make that student as a global variable s1 s2 s3 that's one way to do it the other way is similar to how we pass the value we can also return the value right let's look at that now so here we will receive that value also in s1 we will receive that value in s2 we will receive that value in s3 right and here instead of compute having this we will say it it returns of data type struct student and we will return this temp here right so what happens in this case is now we are passing the value we are computing we are returning that temp so that value gets passed to the main program and gets stored in this s1 right that's the advantage here so we will visualize this execution right again we'll start here the values are initialized s1 is equal to compute of s1 so now it goes to the temp here it does the calculation in the temp so here if you see total is calculated average is calculated now here it is zero right still it is in the statement now the return statement happens now temp gets deleted you will see that the average is calculated in s1 right so the value basically got copied over here this return of temp took that student type and assigned it here so same thing happens for john let's follow it so john is copied to temp the total and average are calculated right so now the average is calculated here now when this statement is executed it does a return and the value gets copied to um, here is join i'll do the next it gets copied over here right total and average are copied over same happens for s3 we'll execute it and the total and average are calculated so the advantage of structure is in normal variable in this particular case if we are using normal variables only one value you could have returned from the function you couldn't have returned all these values from a function grouping them as one element as a structure the entire record can be passed to the function and returned from the function this is a big advantage of structures